Hello and welcome to Big Num Numismatics. It's been a long time. I've been moving, so I haven't really had the time or energy to record a video or do much of anything. Um, but finally, I'm back and we'll be doing a lot more videos and more educational content. But here we have a very cool collection. This is a PCGS submission from the 1990s, so 25 to 30 years old, and comes with the box, and all of the coins are uh, consecutive, and it's really neat that this has uh, stayed together for as long as it has. None of the coins have been sent to CAC or anything, it's just completely fresh. So we got 18 coins, which narrows down the sets. But this is a complete set of Booker T. Washington half dollars. Uh, these were one of the most common half dollars made, but the mintage is really, or the availability is really defined by the first year, which is 1946. Uh, almost a million were minted, a lot were melted, uh, but this is really where all of the coins come from, and pretty much every other year is actually pretty scarce. Uh, there's just not a lot of demand, and they made so many years that uh, people don't really collect them date and mint mark. So I haven't really looked at these at all since I bought them, which was, you know, a week plus ago. Um, but it has nice skin. Uh, you can see on the cheek, um, a lot of times Booker T. Washingtons have this planchet roughness, I guess you would call. Um, this area of the cheek doesn't really strike out well at all. And on higher grade examples, if you see that, that's just mint made. That's not uh, contact marks or anything. Pretty nice, MS-64. You can see it goes from 6301643444 and so on and so forth until uh, 1660. In 1946 D, this had a mintage of 50,000. This one's pretty nice as well. I mean, all of these have really nice skin. Um, they're all... I mean, it looks like whoever had them and sent them off kept them in a collection for a long time before they were even sent off and then kept again. This one has a really nice tone to it. Pretty mark free as well. You can see a lot of the San Francisco issues um, also come proof like pretty commonly. And while this one isn't nearly proof like at all, you can see some really heavy dye polish lines behind the 1946. And uh, it's a decent design, I'll give it that. Um, they do come really nice, and they're pretty cheap. I mean, you can get most of these for under $50 in MS-64 and 5. So now we're going on to the uh, later years, 1947. And this is the lowest minted year, 1947's all are. Only 6,000 were minted. And we can see there's that uh, planchet roughness. Overall, just really cool. I'll speed up on some of these um, just because there are so many. Um, don't want to bore you too much. Here's the 47D. 
This one's a tad bit more dull than the others. I'll zoom out. I just think it's so cool that someone has got this together probably for like 50 years. I also like how the reverse is engraved. Uh, so, you know, if you ever look at a mercury dime, that's like the easiest example I can picture in my head. Um, when you see the uh, luster, I call it like pivot points, but you can tell, you know, whether it was like bowled out on a Morgan dollar or on a mercury dime, you'll see on the reverse that cut down basically like a triangle uh, right of the fasces where there's this pivot point and it spins around there and this one is kind of like an oval around the entire section from here down that's uh, just fascinating not really anything you know groundbreaking 1948, uh, these were minted in 8,005, or 8,005 minted. And what's neat with a lot of these commemoratives in general and Booker T. Washington's is that they were, sold, they were sold as sets and they were distributed in little folders, or however you want to call them. Um, and a lot of times they'll get really nice tab toning and it's just some kind of times they get absolutely vivid. Here's a super gemmy one. I really like this one. It's 48D and you know, a lot of people don't like it, but I really like when there's this like brown toning throughout the coin. Um, to me, it just speaks of the originality of the coin, and a lot of times you'll see bright colors in these, in the, the brown, and I just cannot get enough of toners like that. But uh, this is a super nice 48D. I really like this one. My favorite of the bunch so far. This one also has heavy polish on the reverse. Here's our first MS-65, I believe. Yeah. Um, super flashy. A lot of planchet roughness, but uh, I'm not seeing anything, you know, any hairlines on the cheek. Reverse is great as well. Super cool. And the holder, I um, should also mention. So this is the first uh, generation of the um, OGH. So after the Rattler, there was the doily and the two-part holder, which I do not have close to me to have an, um, an example. Uh, but these were the first OGHs. These are the 3.0. And really the label is the only thing different in, um, compared to the later generations. Uh, you still have this weird font of the first generation PCGS labels. And, uh, these were produced, um, in 1990. So, pretty old. Um, I forget exactly when they ended and switched to the 4.0. But, uh, early 90s for sure. Uh, 1949 also had about 6,000 minted. 6,004. This one's really nice as well. And uh, if you're enjoying this video, uh, please consider liking and subscribing. 
Like I said earlier in the video, I'll be starting to upload more frequently and regularly again. And uh, also let me know which one is your favorite, because uh, there's certainly a lot to choose from. Here's another MS-65. Very flashy, very clean. This is just such a cool set. I mean, the respect for the collector who kept this together and then, you know, allowing me to purchase it. Hopefully it stays together for a long, long time. And, you know, a lot of people don't like CAC. I personally think CAC is a tad bit inconsistent. Um, but, you know, with gold cacs and cac stickers you know you don't have to crack all of them out to get you know what they're truly worth out of if they truly deserve you know a higher grade that's um my favorite thing about cac and hopefully in the future you know a company actually just assigns a new grade and is willing to put money behind so, 1950s, um, 1950S is actually the high, one of the higher mintage uh, mint mark combinations. So, 62,091 examples were struck. This one has some planchet issues on the reverse as well, it looks like. You guys can see what I'm talking about on Slave. Um, these come really, really nice. Even in 6. They're not uh, too hard to find. Now we're getting into the 51s. So 200 plus thousand were minted of the Philadelphia last year issue. Fifty-one D. Um, this one's pretty proof-like. I mean, really stretching the word for that, but uh, it's got really nice polish. It's a tad bit frosty, but still really smooth. And I believe uh, 1947S and 1951D, there's actually a ton in proof-like. So, not uncommon for it to look like that, but not nearly as much as you can find. And for our final coin, we have a 1951S, mintage of 7004, another MS-64, This one has that nice brown toning. It's a bit splashy. No, you'd like to see it concentrated around the rim, for me personally. But still really cool. So that's all the coins. A full 18 coin Booker T. Washington set from the PCGS submission back in 1990-something. Um really neat is this the lid doesn't even come off easily so this hasn't been opened many times at all <laughs> just you know a unicorn type of uh submission very neat i'm so glad i got to handle this and hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well boy um no where is that These two are my personal favorites, the uh, 1948S, 1951D. Uh, 51D is my favorite of the entire thing. I just, it has a great look to it. And let me know um, what you think of the audio as well. 
Um, it's been a long time, so I want to make sure everyone can actually hear me. And also the lighting. I have a new lamp and lighting set up, so that may be a bit finicky at the start as well. So thank you for watching, um, especially if you made it this far. I appreciate it a lot, and see you in the uh, next few days. Thank you.